Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube, and in this video, I'm digging into incremental refresh. Stay tuned. Okay, incremental refresh. It's been out for a bit, and so I'm finally starting to get some questions from my customers on it. And I had this one particular customer. First, he emailed me. I didn't respond fast enough because I, you know, I travel a little bit. And then he just called me on my cell phone. He's like, Patrick incremental refresh doesn't work i was like of course it does he was like no it doesn't i was like yes it does he was like no it doesn't okay okay you guys get it right and so he said let me tell you let me explain to you what i did so instead of me explaining you exactly what he did you guys know how i like to do right i'm going to show you so let's do what let's head over to my laptop okay so he said first he said what he did was he said get data and he went to his Azure SQL database because these guys are using in the Azure, they're all in the clouds, right? So he went to database and he selected, I'm sorry, he went to Azure and he selected Azure SQL database. He clicked the connect and clicked connect, not clicked it. He clicked connect and he entered his server name, his database name, and then he typed in the query that I wanted. My spidey senses, they started to tingle. I was like, wait a minute. This is not going to work, but we know, we all know, right? The rule of customer, the first rule of customer service is the customer's always right. So I continued. So we continued. I went through and he said, okay, then I set up the two parameters. You have to set up the two parameters. So I set up my range start and range in course. And then the final, this, the next step, I went and applied a custom filter to the date that we wanted to use for our incremental refresh. And then what we did was we went back to the table in the desktop and we set up our incremental refresh policy. Wonderful, five years, we wanted to persist five years and refresh the most current, the most recent year. No problem, right? So we did that and then we published it out. I opened up the Mechum and I connected to my new event file. If you guys are not familiar with the Mechum, go watch the video on the Mechum. We unleashed it a while ago. Um, and so once the data set was published, once the, you know, the entire report was published that where I had my incremental refresh configured, what I did was I just did a refresh now on it. Okay. So let me go and make sure that everything's properly configured. So let me set up my, my credentials here. So just a little asterisk right now, you guys know that incremental refresh only works with premium capacity. And you can see my little diamond on my workspace right now. I have some premium capacity running. So I go to my data set and I'm going to just kind of just do a refresh now. And so this, remember, this is a native query that I've input. So I'm going to do a refresh now. So we'll wait. Do, 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 do. Nah, I won't do that. But we'll wait for the refresh to happen. And then like magic, when it's all done, because I have the Mechum running, behind the scenes and SQL Server is my source, I can go ahead and click refresh on the Mechum because now I can actually see the queries that the Mechum um, sent down to SQL Server. And what I'm expecting is queries where it's partitioned out, where it has that where clause for each one of the years. But unfortunately, I just see a bunch of select star, select star, select star, select star. Hmm, is he right? No, it can't be right. So what I did was I shot Adam an email and I was like, Adam, wait a minute. Doesn't look like incremental refresh is working. I think it's because he's using the native query. Adam said, let me send an email to Christian Wade. What's up, Christian? How you doing? Congrats on becoming a US citizen. And so Christian came back and he verified exactly what Adam thought, what I thought just does not work with native queries. And the reason is because the, the reason that it doesn't work, if you go take a peek, go to the query editor, if we go open it up, you'll notice if you look at the steps, if we right click here, you don't see view native query. You right click here, you don't see view native query. That's because query folding doesn't work. And so for incremental refresh to work, we need to make sure that query folding is taken effect. Okay, so I immediately emailed the customer and said, you know what you need to do? You need to do an import from a table or create a view. And so he was like, I don't believe you, Patrick. We're like, well, let me show you. So we're on the phone. And what I did was I created a new PBIX file. You this time setting up incremental refresh, exact same steps, how you configure it, right? I set up my parameters, I set up my policy. But if before I published this report out, I went over to the query editor and I took a look to verify that my query folding was actually taking effect, right? That it was actually there. And so check this out. So I'm gonna right click here. This is where the exact, the table appears. Oh, there's native query. Then I go here. Oh, there's native query. But let's take a look at it this time. 
there's my native query and you can see the where clause that's saying between or greater than or equal to and less than that date okay and so now i can clearly see that query folding is taking effect and now my incremental refresh should work and the customer is like hmm very interesting patrick you're kind of smart and i was like yes i am okay so then i click okay go ahead and close the query editor and then i publish the table out so once the table was published let's move this up a little bit get it out the way so once this was published, the new one, I went over to my data set and I click refresh on my table. So I click refresh. We wait for the refresh to happen. The Mechum is running behind the scenes, capturing all the queries that's being sent from the service down across Azure to my Azure SQL database. The refresh is done. I go over to the Mechum. I refresh the Mechum. Let's see what we get. We should get about six more queries here. Um, let's see. So now we get some queries, but this time look at the queries. Take a look at them. So I'm actually seeing these queries with the where clauses. See right there. If I hover over one of them, you can see with the little two tip, however you want to see it, right? So now I see that what? Query folding is taking effect. My where clause, the queries are be being sent in the form of these partition queries for specific years, and it's all working. So remember, when you take advantage of incremental refresh, when you set it up in your desktop and you publish it out the first time, the initial run is going to pull all the data based on your incremental refresh policy. Now, any subsequent queries should only only refresh however many years, a month, whatever you specified in. Hey, this is what I want you to refresh in that property. OK, so check it out. So I'm going to go back to my data source again, my data set again for the table and click refresh. So I'm going to click refresh. So once it's done, now I'm gonna go back to the Mechum and let's click refresh one more time, one more time, cross our fingers and our toes. Top up to 19, which is one additional query. If we look at the latest query that's come in, you'll see that it's only looking for, right, the current year, which would be 2018. What? My customer was happy, I was happy. Big shout out again to Adam and Christian for helping me figure out what was going on. This is great. So I'm curious, have you guys running this before? You got any questions, comments? Post them in the comments below. You like my video? Give me a big thumbs up. If this is the first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Or as Adam like to say, smash it if you so desire. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs> I forgot.